we have chosen Ireland as a market. And uh, then beyond that, we'll have an open question answer session. So of course, you'll have a lot many doubts and would like to understand it uh, more from us. And we'll have a high tea session uh, followed by a small engagement if you further want to have some more queries. And so we can slot ourselves one an hour. And in fact, we can extend it to one and a half hours, uh, depending on the way you want. And we'll be flexible to make sure that you know once we sign off from this press meet, uh, we all understand. And uh, we are available even after that uh, in case of further doubts. Uh, and uh, we expect uh, that you know it will be a good start for all of us. And uh, we believe that uh, press conference and press meet is the right way to announce with the right audiences to make it uh, accountable to the respective bodies. And uh, that's where we are formally here as uh, myself uh, and also Mr. Ravi Reddy, who is a uh, director and owner of uh, Salom Aviation Limited uh, uh, from Ireland. And he runs his company from there and operates from uh, the London office and the island office uh, as such. A quick brief about uh, my company, which is Everexi Enterprises Private Limited. So we are uh, actually having four different business units as such. And out of which the one business unit is where we are doing this uh, joint venture today, which is called CAMPS. CAMPS uh, will explain you further, uh, which is Civil Aviation Aircraft Asset Management. Uh, so. Uh, this is where we are doing the joint venture. Beyond that, we have also have a manufacturing facility wherein we have a recent merger from our own family business, which is actually uh, into electronic product manufacturing and also into mechanical product manufacturing. Our clients are like Aisha, Bosch, and industries are like railway and automobile and telecoms. That is where we have a major part of our business that is going on. Beyond that, we have consulting services into HR operations and talent acquisitions uh, and management on future skills, which are artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and others. Uh, <clears throat> we also have a running business uh, uh, as textile uh, business, and uh, all three, four, all these four business units, the business heads are sitting here, and uh, uh, they are the one who are responsible for all four business units. Uh, to cut it short and then curtail it around uh, camps, uh, we will talk more about camps today because that's the joint venture we're going to have. Uh, this is about Salom. So uh, Salom is actually a company, uh, Salom Aviation Limited is a company in uh, Cox Island, which is suburbs and uh, of Dublin. But uh, uh, Salom also runs a company in London, UK, wherein, uh, as we know that European Union was actually getting exchange, uh, you know, the likely in future get, will get, you know, disengaged from the UK uh, as such. So, uh, from a business uh, standpoint, so from that perspective, uh, it is important that uh, uh, we have uh, our business reach uh, for the European Union. And so, Mr. Ravi has formed another business unit as Salom Aviation Limited in Cox Island to manage European Union business as such. And he has his uh, certified engineers who are working on 777 and 787 Boeing and uh, G next gen generation engines as such. And he manages the lease operations and aircraft lease management uh, uh, as such, wherein his engineers go and inspect the aircraft before entry and exit of the lease. There are three stakeholders, as you see in the down slide. There are aircraft owners, and these aircraft owners who buy these Boeing and Airbus airplanes from uh, the OEMs, which are nothing but Boeing and Airbus. And uh, these aircraft owners are primarily the leasing companies and banking and financial companies. They own around 50 to 100 to 200, you know, airplanes as such. And 95% uh, of the global market uh, for aircraft leasing for such wide-bodied aircrafts is actually in Dublin, Ireland. And that is where we have chosen this uh, as such, uh, our own uh, Ireland-based collaboration for doing camps. And uh, in when the aircraft owner, as a leasing company, when they buy it, the companies like in India, for example, uh, Indigo or SpiceJet or Aswile or earlier Jet Airways, uh, and, and so the worldwide different airlines, they come and take these aircrafts on lease. Other than the aircrafts that they already know, when they do the fleet expansion, they actually take this aircraft on lease. And uh, that is when, uh, that is when it actually, you know, uh, 
when the aircraft is taken on lease then in then there are certain contract written at the same time health and status of the aircraft is inspected by the inspection engineers so the airline operators they before they take the aircraft from the leasing companies they sign a contract in which an inspection engineer does the entire aircraft inspection including the test flight and the contract is written along with the sla that this is the health and condition of the aircraft and, and this is what we need at the exit of the lease and during the time like for example in india we have dgca similarly we have fa in us and yasa in europe and different regulatory aviation authorities in uh, different countries wherever the aircraft is flying that is where they also give their own service bulletins civil airworthiness requirements uh, and you know ads so those compliances need to be taken care by these airline operators that ensures the airworthiness of the aircraft and as ravi said the true value of the aircraft lies in how much 100% compliance or 90% compliance an aircraft is and the airworthiness of the aircraft is so during the lease period airline operator has this responsibility to maintain the air airworthiness of the aircraft and give the air hand over the aircraft at the end of the lease uh, back to the leasing company as aircraft owners in the similar status and condition so the inspection engineer decides that inspection at the entry of the lease and also at exit of the lease and between that if there is any compliance issue and if there is any uh, damage or something else has happened those gets recorded properly and then the leasing companies charge at the exit of the lease as per the contract back to airline operators so this is huge money it's in millions of dollars so this entire process that i have just explained means a buying an airplane from the boeing and airbus as oems and then from there bringing into onboarding the aircraft rather and bringing it inside the system this is where the camps will work all the specification of the aircraft of the leasing companies that they are doing with five different airline operators and they have around 200 aircrafts all that gets onboarded with all the technical specification inside camps and then from there the entire lease period and airworthiness records of regulatory authority is managed and maintained inside the camps and the exit of the lease before 6 months of uh, the exit of the lease uh, there is already uh, another airline for example uh, who is actually entering into a lease because this is getting exit from airline 1 and moving to airline 2 then he has a visibility as an airline upcoming lease uh, leasing company uh, sorry uh, upcoming airline operator for the same aircraft getting leased will also have a visibility what is going on for last 6 months and what has gone through during the lease period as a visibility before he takes over and enters into the lease once again or else it is actually a bought out at the end of the lease that sales interface is also there so so all this as a business process is quite technical uh, in the sense that all the airworthiness ads at the same time uh, all the mro requirement which is maintenance repairs and overhaul which is currently in sap and some of the amos and others so uh, which is uh, a worldwide uh, known mro softwares all that integration to make sure that that visibility comes inside camps uh, is actually a lot of technical data as uh, ravi said this is actually uh, 100 million uh, more than 100 million documents uh, for just uh, around 10 to 15 planes yes. yeah so that the kind of uh, volume that we are talking so uh, what we as such uh, have decided that so far if i have to talk about existing players in the market uh, there are around two to three players who are doing this niche business and uh, of course one is in ireland itself but uh, at the same time uh, they don't have uh, as ravi is one of the users of those product because he has been doing inspection engineering and his team has been doing that for different airline operators uh, what we understand there is a lot of pain in terms of search of documents in terms of entire process Ravi was uh, two weeks back in Tel Aviv uh, doing for uh, one of the aircraft leasing company. I mean, primary leasing company as aircraft owner, and he was there in Tel Aviv doing uh, one of the Boeing seven four seven, and uh, he took around forty five days. So imagine the cost forty five days seven four seven parked at the airport bay, and then the number of engineers involved, 
and also document search and all is manual process. They have printouts, huge lot of printouts. One room was filled is what Ravi was telling. So by doing this, uh, we are trying to cut down the cost by 15, uh, 50% uh, and also the time by 45% is uh, what CAMS will do. And the kind of technologies that we are looking for is a uh, lot of artificial intelligence built in. Uh, especially, uh, I can uh, explain you the concept of how we are bringing in augmented reality. Is where you know, if the in current state uh, of any of the aircraft maintenance, uh, you have to carry your CAR, which is called DGCS, uh, for example, in India, CAR, which is Civil Aviation Requirement Laws, and then at the same time you have to carry maintenance manuals uh, given by OEMs, and then. You have to refer page by page and you have to check the process and then follow those repairs, overhauls or snag rectification activities. But if you do this inspection through this, it has an app which is augmented reality based app. You just put it to the part, it will blow and explode that part to explain you the process and the maintenance manual by this time has been digitized inside uh, the CAMPS app. So that's the augmented reality and cloud computing means, uh, uh, of course, uh, we are, will be using Microsoft Azure, uh, which has unique facility of automation and uh, it has best security, cyber security management inside. So we'll be using that to make sure uh, that uh, uh, the camps is accessible anywhere, it doesn't need a desktop or a laptop uh, platform and uh, while the aircrafts are flying globally, it takes care of that. So, and then the GIS integration uh, is the one wherein it gives you a geolocation of, of the aircraft uh, as a visibility back to airline operators and, and also the inspection engineers. Because we are talking about an, a leasing company who has 50 aircrafts uh, gone into the, across the world and flying across with some seven to eight airline operators. And so the GIS integration gives a feedback on the app of leasing company with a pure visibility on the world map where exactly things are. And this helps uh, uh, also through uh, the current, like uh, for example, G engines or Rolls-Royce engines, which are there on the aircraft. If you see uh, the data, the kind of data it produces, it depends on each and every part and uh, how much in the engine hours and stuff, and then the flying hours and, and the related uh, geo codes. And even the Boeing has a similar data for the entire aircraft. All this data, uh, will be moved into a very informative manner with a respective for each stakeholder as leasing company or airline operator and inspection engineers, what is in it for them as dashboard as a real time visibility. That's the GIS integration and data management uh, that we are talking here. And to do all this, we always had a challenge that who should be our product advisor because uh, this is definitely going to be a very important one and we luckily and feel blessed to have Mr. Nagesh Pemisetti he is actually running uh, 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 this mentorship through a name called uh, Nurture Next uh, uh, in Seattle, US. And uh, unfo he's, he's in India currently. And we had uh, exchanged our uh, notes and we have exchanged our agreement. And uh, we are supposed to be here, but he's on a holiday right now. So I couldn't have him here, but he, he has conveyed his uh, best wishes and uh, also regards and thanks to all of you. So Mr. Nagesh was, uh, is actually the one who has been a general manager for all future technologies uh, and he has been heading Microsoft from Seattle, US. And uh, he continues to do that uh, uh, in terms of through Nurture Next uh, and leverage his experience uh, and bringing us uh, also that experience. Uh, it's a great asset for us uh, while we you know, move on to this journey. And uh, special validations uh, has been done through him and so we are, a uh, first assessment and validation through a leasing company and also from a product advisor like Mr. Nagesh that you know this is definitely going to be a good case. Uh, so the joint venture is actually, uh, this is about the product development using of course NestGen technologies which I just said about uh, using artificial intelligence, augmented reality and cloud computing. Of course it will have a Java based and Oracle based database and those are your existing parent technologies. Uh, beyond that, this will be a joint IP ownership and uh, as we move and the developed is ready for go to market in another 18 months from now, uh, that is when uh, we will form a company which is already stated in the agreement, uh, which is uh, Erexi Salom Aviation Private Limited. And uh, uh, we'll have a sales presence uh, in Dublin and Ireland uh, 
uh, and uh, London in UK. And the uh, development base in Hyderabad, while we will be leveraging this uh, through uh, many of our, we are being a NASCOM member, we will be leveraging this through uh, NASCOM uh, uh, Future Skills platform and their NSDC platform, which you know about National Skill Development Corporation. And then uh, beyond that, uh, we have initiatives of Telangana government running with DHUB and IIIT campus and such. So we'll be actually forming an ecosystem around this uh, along with uh, our business proposition. At the same time, uh, uh, we will be also reaching out to engineering colleges because we want this technology and the niche skill to come uh, forward for uh, uh, fresher engineers, uh, which are electronics and communication engineers and uh, you know, many of our aeronautical engineers, uh, uh, I mean, we, we always feel, me, myself and uh, Ravi being both aeronautical engineers, we feel that we have to pass on this experience to our junior and our freshers in the industry. So, we will be uh, talking to these engineering colleges and we have colleagues in our company who will be reaching out to these engineering colleges and to TPOs, which are training and placement officers. And we'll be ensuring that we bring through a selection process, the right engineers on board and we give them this experience and exposure as well. Uh, that's the contribution back to, uh, you know, uh, the ecosystem and the government and, and NASCOM's uh, initiatives as such. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we'll have uh, a nearshore uh, support center for managed services. So managed services as, as such as when we sell the product as camps, then the managed services are like uh, their own history of aircraft uh, of, uh, you know, the legacy of records are lying in PDFs and printouts and lying in their offices. So legacy of digitization of entire thing and pulling it back into, into uh, camps uh, is one part. And the second part is uh, uh, also man taking care of transition of lease from one aircraft owner to another aircraft owner. And, you know, managing that transition within camps is also adjacency as a services around that. Uh, while we are exploring more as we proceed uh, in the product development side.